guys. Hey folks, I'm Tina Hui. We're here at CES 2015. And we're here with Jesse Powell um, with Kraken. Yeah. Jesse, how, how are you? Doing great, thanks. Yeah, a little uh, sleep deprived, but otherwise good. You should introduce yourself as, you know, what do you do at Kraken? What does Kraken do? Yeah, so I'm the CEO and co-founder of Kraken. We're a Bitcoin exchange primarily, but we do service a few other cryptocurrencies and uh, a few national currencies. So what is a Bitcoin exchange? A Bitcoin exchange uh, facilitates the trade between um, Bitcoin and other currencies, either other cryptocurrencies or other national currencies or even other assets entirely. So is it like a bank? Sort of. Um, we do take custody of funds, um, but we're not a bank in the sense that we make loans or, you know, our primary purpose is not to be uh, a storage facility for your money. People put their money on the exchange for the purpose of making a trade. Very so, cool. So that's for all the folks that aren't familiar with uh, Bitcoin. And so for the folks who are, I mean, who do you work with? Um, what's the most exciting thing that you've seen happen last year, this year? Most exciting thing? Um, well, last year the price getting to about 1200 was pretty exciting. Um, the ride all the way back down to 250 was not that exciting. <laughs> it's pretty bad um, that it's at 250 right now. Yeah. It seems to be on its way up a little bit today, but uh, let's see, exciting stuff. I mean, all sorts of stuff. Uh, people are going to prison all over the place. Um, <laughs> That's exciting. Uh, you know, just got to sleep with one eye open. Uh, Mount Cox going down. That was probably like the news of the year, you know, back in February. Um, fortunately, it seems like there's some resolution coming in 2015. Uh, we've, with the bit license. Uh, yeah, with, with the bit license, something, at least I'll have some clarity there. And around the Mount Gox case, I think people are expected to be paid out by the end of this year. So. Really? Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know if you're aware, but we've been um, chosen to help the Japanese bankruptcy trustee with the, the whole liquidation process, the investigation, the claims, and uh, the payouts of the Mount Gox. Wow, that's fantastic. Case. Yeah, it's pretty Congratulations. awesome. Congratulations. Thanks. That's a good thing, you know, that's a stamp of approval from government. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's um, a testament to the conservative approach that we've taken working. And uh, it's meant not servicing most of the United States, but I think it's, it's actually appreciated by uh, more serious um, you know, regulators, regulators and investors. And, customers. Yeah. 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 I think it's wonderful that you guys are so compliant and being very conservative. Um, you know, there's a lot going on in the ecosystem where people are kind of overstepping um, what boundaries there are in like normal money transmitter type businesses. And so you yeah. have been the one being like respectable, I guess, because of the fact that that's the stance you guys have taken. And we'll, you know, how important do you think that's going to be for the companies in 2015 that are and the ones that are entering the space of startups and such? Yeah, it's really hard to say. I I think that, um, I think Lasky said that when the bit license comes out, there'll be like a, a two year moratorium for the companies that are doing, that are at least attempting to comply with, with most of it. Um, so it may not, it may not matter that much, but you know, there are 50 states in the country and then there's the rest of the world and we could see enforcement action from any of those states at, at any time. And I think there's a huge, a huge risk to, to most of the, um, most of the companies in the space that are are trading between Bitcoin and fiat, that they have exposure to laws in these states where they may have been kind of uh, a little bit too aggressive. And so if there is a giant wave of enforcement, um, we wanted to be at least one company that was a good example and would still be left standing after that happened. So, right. Well, that's exciting. I mean, that. I think that's what Bitcoin needs is stability and a lot yeah. more maturity is a good thing, right? I mean, it's not something that everybody embraces, but it's a good thing and something that's necessary. So Yeah, I think for the next wave of growth to come, I think that's going to be institutional money, Wall Street money, investors that have more more to lose and that have um, you know, codes of conduct they kind of they need to comply with and that's going to mean that they can't 
put money into these exchanges that aren't legally compliant, that aren't doing things the right way. Um, so I really think for Bitcoin to grow, we've got to kind of get over that hurdle and, and as a whole start following the law a little bit closer. But that said, the cost to comply in the United States, for example, is just, I think for any, any Bitcoin company, it just so far outweighs what the opportunity really is right now. I mean, it's so expensive. I know. It's so expensive. Yeah. Compliance lawyers, you know, you gotta file all the time. Yeah, you can't really justify it. I mean, the cost you're going to be spending more than you're actually earning just to put your compliance program together and maintain right. it. So, it's very hard for a startup. I mean, this is just a problem across the financial services industry and, and fintech as a whole. I mean, it's why we haven't seen much innovation in that space in the, in the U.S. for decades. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I think fintech is interesting since Bitcoin is being talked about as the leader of fintech and innovation for the first time in ages. And then it's funny when you take a look, it's such a catch-22 to need to be compliant, then it's so expensive, then it, you need the startups to start innovating. And then, yeah. I mean, everybody is basically at gridlock. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, there's going to have to be some evolution in the law if we want to see startups and, and innovation come to fruition because you can't just go raise five million dollars to test your idea um, and so what we've chosen to do is is to test our idea on other markets outside of the United States and things have gone well but still not well enough to justify the expense inside the United States and still state regulators are um, deciding how they want to regulate Bitcoin yeah I mean I think it's gonna be really interesting I mean California is okay New York obviously isn't Colorado's yeah. pro Texas was pro. You're kind of yeah. like, we should make a map. <laughs> it's 50 different countries, really. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, you know, we'll see where things lie in the future, yeah. I guess. Are there any new features? Uh, new features. We launched in Japan recently. Um, things are going well there. We translated the site to Japanese and we got Japanese support staff. Um, you know, we got the deal with, with the Mt. Gox liquidation. Uh, we just had a workshop a couple weeks ago with Fedor Bank to discuss uh, and brainstorm Cryptocurrency Bank, which is hopefully a new bank that will be emerging in, in the EU to support Bitcoin companies and, and Bitcoin users. Wow. Yeah, in the so EU? In the EU, yeah. Um, I don't know if we'll be able to take on clients from the U.S., but at least it'll, it'll be solving a problem for that That's part fantastic. of the world. Congratulations. Uh, thanks a lot. Well, but, how many uh, people have come and asked you about Bitcoin? Oh, quite a quite a few. Um, I don't know. I'm gonna say I've been I've been in and out, and I've had some long conversations with people, but probably 20 people today I've talked to. What do you think about CES so far? It's cool. I had a chance to walk around the the central hall and see all the big, expensive booths, and um, pretty exciting Bitcoin is here. Isn't it's cool. It? Yeah, I think Bitcoin's probably the most exciting thing here, and maybe the drones are pretty exciting too. But <laughs> just maybe. Other than that, you know, it's like just the next version of the same TV they had last year. Oh, all the same gadgets. Everybody yeah. has an iPhone case. So exactly. many headsets you can't even think straight. Yeah. But so yeah. There's a lot of uninteresting stuff. But I think the Bitcoin pavilion has got to be the most interesting thing here. I agree. 100%. And it's rocking. The Kraken is here. It's awesome. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah, Jesse. absolutely. It's always good to see you. Always good to see you yeah. as well. And um, we'll see you again soon. Maybe Dogecoin too. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks. Bye, Bye guys. guys. And we're with Kraken Powell's? Oh, hey. no, not Kraken Powell's. Okay, we say hi, guys, and then we say bye, guys, yeah. and then we start the interview? Yeah. Okay. Okay, ready? Yeah. One, two, three.